Metagross is finally back with the Indigo Disc DLC, and it came with a ton of buffs. It now gets access to the move Psychic Fangs, which is more accurate and stronger than Zen Headbutt, plus it removes Reflect and Light Screens. It now also gets Knock Off, which can do solid damage to switch-ins, plus removes items. Since Metagross can actually be versatile, if you run a special attacking set, it can now use Psychic Noise, a brand new 75 base power move that stops the opponent from healing for two turns. At 1,212 pounds, it can also use Heavy Slam, which becomes over a 100 base power move on most opponents. Finally, it also gets access to Trailblaze to deal damage to water types and get a speed boost, and when used on a weakness policy set, it can get out of hand pretty quickly. Alright, look, with all the Pokemon that have returned and been buffed from the new DLC, I'm super excited to try a lot of these things out. Metagross is one of my favorite Pokemon and this thing is super fun. If you're into this kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k, it'll only take you a second. I promise you won't regret it, and let's go ahead and get into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Gyarados. Now, I decide to go with the Golurk. I've been having a lot of fun with this as a lead. Potentially being able to trick a Choice Band, set up some Stealth Rock, and overall just be kind of a, a giant menace. Now, this isn't a great matchup for me. We also noticed that the Gyarados does not activate Intimidate, meaning this is definitely going to be some type of Moxie Dragon Dance set. I don't want to be swept, so I just decide to stay in here as they go for the Crunch, I imagine expecting me to switch into something more likely to take a Waterfall. But I'm able to live and then fire back a nice little Poltergeist at him. And sometimes you gotta let the Golurk use his own Choice Band. That's actually just going to end up taking care of the Gyarados, and that is amazing. So, now they get a free switch into the Gliscor. This thing is even more of a menace than the Golurk is, and generally you're going to have a bad time against buff Zubat over here. So I decided to switch out. I'm going to go into the Feraligator. I imagine they probably just go for Stealth Rock or something turn one. Uh, I can potentially start to Dragon Dance and do some Feraligator bullshit. So it turns out they actually just go for the knockoff on the switch, gets rid of my Life Orb, so hinders what the Sheer Force Gator can do a little bit. However, Gator ain't afraid. We got the butt cheeks of an absolute beast over here, so I'm just going to go right for a nice little dragon dance. I know that I can take an earthquake from this range and then be able to outspeed pretty much their entire team after a plus one speed boost. So that's exactly what we do. And this thing stays in and actually ends up going for the Thunder Fang, which we do live. And now it's time to fire off some Frozen Fists of Fury out here. I'm going to go for that Ice Punch. It is boosted by the sheer force, and that is absolutely going to knock out the Gliscor there. Thing is allergic as shit to ice. And Feraligator is actually on a little mini rampage over here. As now they get a free switch and they decide to go into Gengar. So I know that I outspeed this thing. Plus I do have the coverage with the crunch. So I take a nice little bite out of him. And it turns out that it is going to be Focus Sash. So that's the downfall of not being able to set up the Stealth Rock early game. Now he gets the uh, the guaranteed live. And then can fire off the Shadow Ball. And down goes the Feraligator early. But we're able to, you know, stir it up a little bit here. I got this thing down to its Sash. And this actually opens up an opportunity to bring in the Metagross and potentially start to set up here. Now, basically everything in their mom gets access to Trailblaze now, and I'm all here for it. it especially on a weakness policy set, I can definitely, it can do some damage. So, I bring in the Metagross knowing I can take at least one attack from this thing, and I go for the Trailblaze as the free kill, plus the nice little plus one speed boost. But they actually decide to switch into the Salamence, who comes in, even if it was Intimidate, it actually, it wouldn't work because of Clear Body. Just let it be known, Metagross, is not afraid. I get that Trailblaze up, which obviously doesn't do much, but what it does is gives me that nice little boost to where now I can outspeed and hit him with a Meteor Mash, and this is actually a perfect setup because their coverage with Earthquake, we know at full HP I can easily take one, and that is gonna activate my weakness policy. So the Trailblaze got us up to plus one speed, we're now faster than everything, and with that weakness policy, we are ready to do some damage. We get that plus one attack, and now Meteor Mash, with the chance to also get us another attack boost, this thing is actually in full form, ready to pop off. And uh, Mom said it's my turn on the Xbox, for real. So, listen, I like to run Meteor Mash still because of that chance for the attack boost. Heavy Slam being around 120 base power on a lot of enemies is pretty wild. But now they get a free switch into Infernape, who does have the priority with the Mach Punch. However, it's neutral and Metagross is thick as hell. We're able to live it and then knock him out with the Psychic Fangs. And down goes the Infernape. Now they're down to just a few Pokemon left. Espeon's gonna get outsped and absolutely destroyed by a Meteor Mash. And this guy realizes he does not wanna play on the Xbox anymore. He is, they are gonna run. So weakness policy Metagross has effectively ruined homie's day and you love to see it. So listen, that was cut short a bit. So we got ourselves a second game here. The Metagross team is not done yet. There's too much power to be unleashed. And this team is looking really interesting. They have the Terrapagos, which is absolutely insane right now. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. 
So this time they're gonna go ahead and lead off with the Masquerade. Pinhead Larry means only one thing as a lead. That means it's about to, the battlefield is about to get sticky all over the damn beach right now. And Sticky Web is really not ideal for my team. I, I don't have any hazard removal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do my best and work around it. So they actually, they do go for that Sticky Web turn one. And at this point, I'm gonna give them a nice little trick. I figure at least if I can make this thing choice banded, gonna have to lock itself into one move and then it won't be able to like quiver dance if it's carrying anything like that. Uh, and overall, a, a choice banded Masquerain is an even less threatening Masquerain. So I actually do end up getting this thing's Focus Sash, which is kind of nice. Now I know that I'm guaranteed to not die from a one hit kill. And I'm free to basically just set up my Stealth Rock here as they're going to switch. Now they bring in Rillaboom, and if the battlefield being sticky wasn't enough, now it gets to be all green. They set up the Grassy Surge, and uh, essentially I don't have a lot to do to this thing, so I'm able to at least get up my Stealth Rock here, and the Golurk has kind of done what it needed to do. They also, they don't have any Stealth Rock or Spikes up of their own, so the Focus Sash on my end will stay intact and we're feeling pretty good. So my best switch into this thing is definitely going to be the Hydrapple. Arguably the greatest new Pokemon we got in the Indigo Disc DLC. The Snake Apple, Young Snapple comes in, and we take grass moves literally all day long. And uh, also look pretty damn cool while doing it. So we come in, we do get caught up in the Sticky Web, which is fine, we're not fast anyway. But they actually predict the switch and go for the U-turn, which does over half to me, which is not ideal. Because now Rillaboom gets tucked back in for later and they can choose a matchup against the Hydrapple. And they decide to go into young Neopet, the Terrapagos, Terrapagos. I don't know, this thing's a freaking crazy turtle and it turns into a uh, full-on Frisbee turtle. So, listen, at this point, this is a very scary Pokemon. At this moment in time, this thing is, it, it's literally insane. It potentially can set up Calm Minds here. I'm gonna go for the Dragon Tail just to cover for that, but they actually just go right for the Terra Star Storm. Now, they haven't Terra at this point yet, but that is gonna take care of Hydrapple and down we go with all seven of our heads. So that is unfortunate because it's my best answer to the Rillaboom, but with U-Turn being able to kill me in that range, it's not ideal, but I can actually just go into the Golurk. Now, I know that Golurk can for sure take one attack. I have the Focus Sash that we straight up just yoinked from the Masquerade, and I can hit it with a nice little, not little Earthquake here, but they're actually gonna end up switching out. And if one turtle wasn't enough for you, here's a second one. They decide to go into the Torkoal, and with the Grassy Terrain up, it actually reduces damage uh, from ground moves. So it was kind of my only option to go for that Earthquake here, but at least being super effective and stab, I can get some solid chip damage here. And uh, after the Grassy Surge recovery, this thing, turtle's looking damn healthy over here. But I just decided to stay in. I'm gonna go for another Earthquake just to get as much damage as possible. I don't have a lot of options, and I also figured this thing will probably set up the Stealth Rock here. So Earthquake almost knocks this thing out and it does allow them to set up the rocks. So at least my Focus Sash does stay intact. And also that is gonna be the last turn of the Grassy Terrain. So he soaks up a little bit of last Grassy Terrain recovery and away it goes. So I figure Relubum actually switches into this thing easily. So I decide to go for the Poltergeist, but they actually just stay in and then I beat this turtle's face in with its Heat Rock. So <laughs> down goes the Torkoal. And um, that's a pretty annoying Pokemon out of the way, but that does open it up for turtle number one to come back in. And I am frightened of this thing. I don't have a lot of answers in terms of switch ins to this. Plus with the Focus Sash, I can at least guarantee that I can get some nice stab earthquake damage off, but they're actually gonna end up going for the Terra. So this thing is like the main Stellar Terra dude. Essentially the way Stellar Terra works is they get the ordinary like extra damage Terra boost on all their attacks, at least for the first time that they use it. Plus their Terra Star Storm does super effective damage to any opposing Pokemon who is also terra It's like, it's a confusing new mechanic, but overall this thing goes for the Water Pulse. It has extra Terra damage on that since it's the first time it used it. It knocks me down to my Focus Sash and uh, I'm totally fine with that. So Focus Sash, uh, Golurk did actually get to come in a little bit clutch here. Thank you, Masquerain. And the Earthquake is going to do, yeah, like, not a whole lot of damage. This thing's, this thing's stats are, they're absolutely nutty. But this thing is just going to be able to finish me off with one more Water Pulse. And down goes the Golurk. So I feel like I did what I needed to do. I did at least get a little, de little decent bit of chip damage on this thing. It's important to note that this does keep its original defensive um, typing when it goes for the Terra. So it is just a, a normal type defensively. So you know what? I decide to go into the Metagross. I'm thinking... I can come in since I'm clear body, the sticky web does not affect me, so I keep my speed. And at this point, I'm gonna try to take advantage of that. I'm actually just gonna end up going for the Trailblaze, even get a plus one, which will make me faster than their entire team. And they actually end up switching out here. So they're gonna go into Cresselia. So 
Metagross versus Cresselia is definitely an interesting matchup. If I'm if I'm running the knockoff, I'm in a good spot. However, this set is just primarily supposed to be kind of a weakness policy sweeper set, so I don't have the knockoff. But also, Cresselia doesn't really have the ability to you know, really do anything to Metagross offensively, so I'm still fine here. And this is going to allow me to just fire off some Meteor Mashes. And honestly, the, the more the merrier, because that gives me a higher chance to get that plus one attack. It does some solid chip damage, but this thing actually just decides to say... I'm going to dip, and he goes for the Lunar Dance and just straight up dies, which is now going to fully heal whatever they decide to go into next, and back comes crazy-ass Galapagos Turtle, and you literally can't even see what's going on on this Pokemon, that's how you know Buddy's got some crazy shit going on. So, it comes in and gets brought back to full because of the Lunar Dance, but then gets knocked down a little bit due to that Stealth Rock. So, at this point, I'm thinking, okay, this thing likely has the ground coverage, and I probably am not going to be able to take one, especially with the... Uh, stellar Terra. So what I do is decide to put some balloons on homie. Listen, I weigh like 1,200 pounds, but it turns out just four balloons is going to be able to lift me off the ground enough uh, to the point where I can avoid an incoming ground move. So I am also faster because of that Trailblaze at this point, so I get a free Meteor Mash off, which is not quite going to do a whole lot of damage, but they do go for the Earth Power, and we are floating right above it. So listen, Gen 9, Metagross, benefiting from Terra, like everything else is just makes it even better, which is amazing. So they decide to switch that thing out, which leads me to believe maybe it's like choice specs. I don't know what's going on with this turtle overall, but they hard switch into the Rillaboom. Now it is also going to set back up the Grassy Surge, but since now I'm flying type, I'm not going to be able to get that recovery from it, but that's fine. I'm just, I'm basically just mashing. I'm button mashing over here. I click the, the Meteor Mash. It does get a critical hit on the incoming really boom here, which is great. And now since I'm faster, all I got to do is mash him one more time, even raising my chances for an attack boost. But I actually just straight up end up missing it, which is wildly unfortunate because this allows them to go for the knockoff. Gets rid of my weakness policy and does a decent chunk in the process. And he's over there just laughing at me, healing on his own grass. But I can just Meteor Mash one more time as I outspeed. Uh, they actually, important to note, they don't go for the grassy uh, glide there. It doesn't glide at me because I am uh, flying type, would be able to take it. And down goes the Rillaboom. So now they bring back in Turtle. This thing is looking like it's very close in range for Meteor Mash to knock out. If I could get an attack boost uh, earlier, we would have been in an insane spot. But of course, I do outspeed. I go for the mash, it actually just ends up knocking this thing out. And Metagross is again absolutely going crazy, taking care of whatever legendaries you throw at me, even the crazy new Stellar Turtle. So, now at this point they have two Pokemon left. It's going to be this Palmot, plus they have the Masquerade in the back. So, first off, in comes Crazy Ass Imposter fighting Pikachu, and I just decide to stay in here and go for that Earthquake. However, this thing turns out to be Choice Scarf, and it's going to be able to outspeed that with the Double Shock. Takes care of the Flying Metagross. And down we go. But listen, I'm not afraid. They got two two Pokemon left. The Pomat shouldn't be that big of a problem considering I do have some answers in the back. Uh, and then we're all good. It does use up all of its electricity, so it loses its electric type after using Double Shock. And it is sitting at full HP, but I'm just going to end up going into the Gouging Fire. And I'm in a pretty solid position because knowing that this thing was Choice Scarf, you can only use Double Shock if you are electric type. And it lost its typing, so... It's stuck being able to essentially struggle at this point, so they are forced to switch. So I bring in Crazy Ass Paradox Entei, and it's going to activate my booster energy with the Protosynthesis, get that nice little attack boost, and at this point, they can bring in the Masquerade. I actually end up misclicking and click the Burning Bulwark. I literally, I clicked the wrong move, and <laughs> it was not ideal. But at least the Masquerade has to come into Stealth Rock. It's going to do, like, half to it, plus I can finish it after taking an attack with a Dragon Claw, so... So I'm just going to straight up just burning, burning Bulwark the air for absolutely no reason. And at this point, as long as I don't, nothing crazy happens with like an Air Slash flinch, uh, we are in a good spot. So I go for the Dragon Claw here. They are, of course, going to be able to outspeed. They go for the Air Slash. Luckily, we are, are able to take it because we Thick does not get the flinch. And the Dragon Claw finishes it off. So the final Pokemon is going to be that Pomot. And we know it's Choice Scarf. We also know what comes along with these things are the most annoying move, and that is Revival Blessing. So I find myself in a spot where they're likely going to revive something, and I just decide to go for the Flare Blitz just in case. They are going to go for the Blessing, and that is going to allow them to revive whatever Pokemon they want in the back, back to half health at least. So they decide to revive the Terrapagos, of course. I don't know how many times i got to teach this turtle this lesson, but I go for the Flare Blitz there. It actually doesn't end up knocking this thing out because of the Intimidate. 
But luckily, this thing is, in fact, stuck into, uh, <laughs> literally, struggle. Because you can only use Revival Blessing once, of course, and him being Choice Scarf, forced to use it again, has to knock itself out, and now we got ourselves a damn Zombie Turtle. And uh, hopefully I have enough resources to end up taking care of this thing. So, in comes the Half-Dead Turtle, again. I don't know how many, I've literally seen this thing way too many times at this point. It is its base form. Of course, turns himself into a nice little huckable frisbee, and it is going to be able to outspeed here. So the Stealth Rock knocks it down below half, and I'm feeling like, I'm feeling fine. They go for the Terra Star Storm. That is going to knock out the Paradox Entei, but that is going to open the door to one of my favorite late-game revenge killers in the game, and that is Unburdened Hitmonlee. So again, like I mentioned, this thing is still just normal typing. I can bring in the drumstick here, and... Of course, the Sticky Web is unfortunate because we do need speed. However, that's exactly what this Hitmonlee is built to do. Essentially, I can now go for the Fake Out. It's going to get boosted damage from its normal gem, uh, making this thing flinch. And then also, since I use up my item, it is going to activate my Unburden ability, doubling our speed. And since I am max speed at this point, even though they do have the Sticky Web up, I should be able to outspeed and then beat the hell out of this turtle. I do outspeed. A close combat is going to take care of it. And uh, sometimes you just got to kill the turtle twice. So that is going to be the end of the match. I thought that was just a super kind of just crazy game. And overall, super fun to use this team. Let me know what you guys thought. What are you uh, excited to see in this new DLC? And uh, I will see you guys next time. Peace out.